Welcome to your doom. What's up, everyone? This is Otto Kachu. This is Justin Carcassoli. Joined we, once again by yeah, a special guest, Antoine. What's up, man? What's going on, guys? What's going on? Happy to be back again. Yeah, yeah. this is the Welcome to Your Doom show in our second installment of the Blade Retrospective series. We are going to be talking about Blade 2 today. Before we do so, I did want to issue a, a correction from the last from the from our Blade uh, 1 uh, segment. I said in that show that uh, this was the first R-rated superhero film with a black lead. I was actually uh, wrong about that. Um, my brother-in-law, Noah, pointed out the fact that Spawn came out in 1997, Shit. one yes. year before this That's movie. Right. That's right. And right. he blew my mind with that because I, I remember Spawn coming out after this movie. I don't know about you guys, yeah. but like... <laughs> Yeah, my I mindset totally... was Blade was always first. Yeah, that's a yeah, good it's, point. It's uh, it's it, it, interesting. So I want to amend the statement by saying, um, the original Blade was the first good R-rated superhero <laughs> movie headlined by a black actor, uh, or the first Marvel R-rated uh, movie head headlined by a black actor. But right. uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, someday I'd love to talk about Spawn because that is just a, that, that movie is filled with weirdness. Uh, movie, actually. It's, it's, a, it's a very guilty pleasure it's awful it is. but it's it is. very i don't know it's There's so bad but it. so good at the yeah. same time yeah. John you want to was... talk about fucking cg that doesn't age well that is like the poster boy <laughs> film they were like in 1990 whatever they were just like look at this shit and now we're looking at it like <laughs> well we're what? looking <laughs> we're looking <laughs> trying to try not to but it's, yeah. it's there yeah yeah so special special shout out to to my brother in law Noah. Yeah, almost lost my almost lost my nerd cred on that one for a moment. So oh, thanks for save. swooping in. Um, all right, so uh, Blade Two came out four years after the original. So Blade was nineteen ninety eight. Blade Two uh, was released in two thousand two. Um, sequel couldn't be a more different film. Uh, David Goyer and Peter Frankfurt, the producer, were fans of Guillermo del Toro's work up until two thousand and two. Guillermo del Toro had done a movie called Kronos um, and a movie called Mimic for Miramax. And that wasn't a particularly good experience for Del Toro, but I recommend anybody who's kind of interested in B-movie monster movies to check out Mimic. I don't know if you guys had seen Mimic with Mira Sorvino um, back in the 90s, but fun monster flick about mutating man-sized cockroaches, if that's your thing. Um, Del Toro Ooh. signs on to... <laughs> <laughs> I can see I can see the look on your face, Antoine. Not so much. Maybe not your thing. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, Del Toro signs on and brings all of this like early budding monster monster movie sensibilities, like kind of along with a very strong color palette for the film. Norrington's Blade was kind of a cold industrial urban setting where Blade II um, set and shot in Prague's filled with like warm colors, golds, reds, ambers, lots of texture. Uh, the first movie was kind of like cold and clinical. This one is kind of like warm and like, I don't know, for lack of a better term, like goopy. It's like, it's kind of gross. Like this movie has really got like that monster movie vibe go going on with it. So did you guys go to see this movie in the theater when it came out? Blade 2? Uh, I can't say that I did. Mm. I'm, sure, I'm sure I must have. I, yeah, I, don't, like I don't recall the experience as vividly as the first Blade. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I definitely saw this in the theaters, I would think. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I must have. Yeah, I, mean, I'm the same I, as, no. I think I'm the same as Justin. Like, I think I might have seen in the theater, but it's like it's not as vivid as seeing the first one. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's interesting because I didn't well, uh, I didn't see the first one in theaters. I saw it on home video and I saw this one I saw in theaters. I was like I was reading all the press, looking up all the Internet stuff because Internet movie journalism kind of was like coming up in that time you know ain't it cool news and some of these websites that were like really heavily reporting on movies that were in that were in production uh and uh, Guillermo del Toro was kind of building his following with those first few movies that that he made um and and yeah I went to see in the theaters it just fucking blew my mind like yeah. did you so when you guys saw it whether it was the theaters or not like was this a movie that had the same effect as Blade One, like seeing Blade One for the first time, or or different effect. Maybe you didn't like it. Who knows? 
the the first time I saw this, I remember liking this way more and thinking it was a much tighter, uh, better movie than the first one. The first time I saw it. Right. Like, upon watching it, you know, again and again, I see that there's a lot more stuff with this one that's a little jankier than the first yes. one. Like, it doesn't feel yeah. as clean. For some reason, I came yeah. out, I remember thinking that this was uh, by and by and far a much better film than the first Blade. But now, like, upon re-watching it and comparing the two, it's definitely not. Yeah. The first one's actually far tighter. Um, it introduces a lot less thing, like a lot less characters, obviously. Yeah. And then it also doesn't introduce basically anything it introduces in this film, it ends up kind of paying off. Sorry, in the original blade, anything new that they introduce, it kind of leads to something. It's not typical that things are introduced in the in the first one where it doesn't go somewhere. This one, I feel like they keep introducing us to cool shit. And then they don't really follow through on it, which is super frustrating. Yeah. And then this movie is plagued by stupid characters. Yeah. <laughs> there are just so many dumb people in this film. It yes. is staggering that anything got done in yeah. the vampire world at all. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. we'll talk yeah. more about that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. that being said, I love this movie. Like yeah. I could watch this movie over and over again. And one other thing, and I, you, you'll probably mention this too, mm. the director's commentary on this is one of my favorites <laughs> in any DVD Blu-ray I've ever seen. Fucking yeah. Del Toro crushes it. And his commentary on the deleted scenes oh, so still to good. this day makes me laugh. It's the best. <laughs> it's so, so good. Yeah. yeah. So Antoine, what are your kind of general feelings on I, the movie? I'm the exact saw? same as Justin. I'm just going to, the yeah. exact same. Like I went in there thinking that this movie was so much better yeah, uh, it was much tighter, a lot cleaner. Everything yeah. kind of came together. Yeah, I thought the use of the CG was a lot better in this yeah. one. Oh yeah, but then now I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, like yeah. how are you oh, jumping off funny. walls and looking like you're a rubber man? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good. Oh, we are gonna we're gonna get to that one, my friend. That was uh, the, there's there's some stuff to talk about. That you know what? I'm I'm in the same boat. Like I think we all agree because I watched this movie again and I was like, I I still love this movie. I love yes. it. Yeah. But yeah, I'm we're like, gonna shit on is... it, but we all love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's 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 you're absolutely right. It's it's aged uh, 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 less gracefully than the first movie for sure. Yeah, the first movie felt much more cohesive, whereas this one. It felt like an excited nerd shooting stuff and just wanting to like cram a ton of shit in there that they just couldn't pay everything off. They just couldn't. Right. It was right. almost like too many ideas trying to like get uh, jammed into one into one movie. Um, cool. Okay, so that's general thoughts. Let's let's talk about the plot. So uh, let's jump right in. <laughs> let's talk about the only movie with the word nipplehead in it. This is Blade. Two. I fucking cracked up because I forgot that he says this in, uh, when I saw it again. And I, I started laughing. My wife was like, what are you laughing at? I'm like, he just said nipplehead. <laughs> there's so much weird dialogue in this. Yeah, yeah there's some oh, janky man. fucking dialogue. Oh. Um. <laughs> All right, so let's let's start uh, let's start at the starting. We got the crew. We got kind of like the credit sequence, uh, which recaps like kind of the the state of things. Uh, we have uh, a Nomac uh, uh, introduced to our antagonist, Nomac, uh, entering a blood bank and attacking some vampires, and the retrieval of Whistler. This all really just happens in like maybe the first 10, 15 minutes of the movie. Right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what did you guys think of this first part up to kind of like getting Whistler back? So one thing I'll say is I didn't really know much about the movie coming into it. One thing I remember, dis actually, now that I'm thinking about it, one thing I do remember distinctly was being surprised by that opening scene. Yeah. You know, and 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 to talk about the grossness, like they're walking by things that looked like they just had the rave from Blade One in them and they're <laughs> the mopping it up. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh, like that's not a red flag. Yeah. Like come down to this crazy looking basement where there's literally rooms of blood. It's like, I thought I was just trying to give like a pint. What's going on in here? Yeah. Um, but I didn't know anything about uh, Luke Goss's character. I didn't really know that he was going to be the man, main protagonist in that. No, antagonist. antagonist. In this. Yep. Yeah. And all of a sudden things just switch. And I was surprised. I was genuinely surprised when I first saw that. Um, yeah. And then his quick turn from laughing hysterically. But there was one thing I actually noticed upon rewatching it 
they actually, I think, I could have to go back and look at what his teeth looked like before if you saw them, but his top line of teeth, as he starts laughing, they don't change, but you can see that they are not normal teeth. They're sharper, yeah. They're yeah, sharper you're right. and yeah. skinnier, and I didn't notice that. I literally, yeah. ju- I've seen this movie a ton of times, yeah. and I just noticed it literally 10 minutes before we started watching this, because I had it on the background when I was making notes. Yeah. Um, and then the slow transition, and then you see the little gap. It's neat how throughout the film, they slowly kind of reveal what these reapers are yeah and mm-hmm. you know getting this quick taste of it at the beginning it, it kind of opens up the door of like what the fuck is going on and yeah, it's, yeah. I, I thought the movie started off perfect yeah aside cool. from the yeah. 45 like the 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 introduction basically the recap of the last movie was literally close to the same length as our podcast in the first blade so it was it was a lot to take it last time on blade yeah that's right yeah that Antoine. Was Antoine, yeah no, for me it was uh the start was fine like i i was i was just shocked that whistler was still alive because yeah. Yeah. i do remember vividly in the movie the first movie that the gunshot went off yes it does and then and, yeah blade doesn't look back so i figured okay whistler's gone yeah i was happy that he was still alive because Yes, there's a great character and he should be in the movie. And yeah, Chris Christopherson is fucking hilarious. <laughs> in yeah, this yeah, movie, yeah. he's a fucking riot in this the movie. Best. He's hilarious. So <laughs> I'm glad that he's in it, but it's like yeah. I thought he was dead. Like, yeah. so him just being a, a vampire or whatever they're using yeah. him for, I'm like, yeah, oh that, okay. You need to keep him in the movie. So you just found a way to keep him alive. Yeah, um, I would say that this retcon from the previous movie, like really does belong in the echelon of like the Halloween franchise retcons. Like this is a (laughs) heavy, this is (laughs) a heavy, heavy retcon that I would expect to see in like a long running slasher series, not (laughs) in like Blade 2. Because the gunshot does go off. And the one guy uh, that he interrogates with with his motorbike wheel, which I always love, uh, he says he shot himself and then he turned. So I'm like, oh, that's interesting. He shot himself and, you know, uh, and then he turned. That'd be interesting if he was holding anybody else's gun other than blades, which is loaded with silver bullets. So <laughs> yes. either way, this guy is dead, right? <laughs> By your own movie rules. But uh, but yeah, I was I was surprised. I'm like, how are they going to do this? And they they just kind of like, yeah, it's, just, you know, it doesn't it's matter. fine. It doesn't, it's it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um. Yeah, just so so a couple of things that you guys touched on. Luke Goss, guy who plays Nomak. I think uh, so. Luke Goss, up until this point, was just in like a like his claim to fame was like a British boy band, and uh, they cast him in this movie. And I think it's is really inspired casting. Like I don't know who made this decision, but it's. I think he's great. I think he really does solve the problem of Deacon Frost from the first movie. Oh yeah, yeah. That Nomak is a formidable antagonist with a little bit that little bit added of uh, like sympathy like to his mm-hmm. to his plight that you has find out depth. later he's more he yes. has a deeper he's a deeper story than just like oh i'm just a turned vampire that just wants to take over that's yeah, right absolutely yeah. awesome totally. really, yeah really, yeah deep, really really great story guys for your, for your main <laughs> for your main villain yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and nomek i think does he puts on a pretty like sorry uh luke goss puts on a pretty good performance uh, interesting note is that he actually appears as uh, Prince Nuada in Hellboy 2. Yes. I don't know if you guys knew this, but uh, oh. the antagonist from Hellboy 2 is played by him, also covered in makeup, also a sympathetic antagonist type role in that movie. So so Del, Del Toro comes back to him as an actor later in his career. Um, so yeah, we talked about the retcon. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about this action sequence because I do love this sequence and it's it's great sounding. And it looks, I think it still looks great. Um, There's a couple of uh, uh, things about Blade himself that that kind of um, show why this movie is super different than the previous one. His vest, for example. So like in the first Blade, his vest is super tactical. If you look at it, it's like kind of like almost like a SWAT vest, you know? Yeah. yeah, In this movie, you can see like Del Toro's whimsical monster movie kind of horror uh designs where like the 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 buckles now look like the tattoos that he's got on him uh the inside of his trench coat is red i don't know if you guys noticed that i always love that touch it's like a dark red i remember hearing on the um 
commentary that del toro is like i changed it to red because blade's calm and cool exterior but he's like a beast on the inside he literally says that in one of the documentaries on the on the dvd so really cool interesting changes starting starting right off right off the bat Uh, and you get to see the first use of what del toro calls the l cam which is the liberated camera using cgi stunt doubles they use it in this first scene where he jumps out of the window uh, mm-hmm. And the camera comes beside him. He does the flip, lands on the ground, and shoots uh, the vampire in slow motion. And then later, when he jumps onto the bike and kills the guy with the with the little zip line thing and takes his place on the bike. Cool moments. Both reasonable use of CGI stunt doubles. I actually didn't mind those. What did you guys think of those here? The that it, so the C, the bad CGI I was talking about wasn't the CG stunt double in this regard. Yes. Yeah, you can tell it's CG, but it's actually not too bad. The character yeah. actually seems to have weight in these scenes, whereas in other ones he doesn't. <laughs> yes. The C, the dodgy CG is a couple of the shot. Th- there's that one vampire that dissolves right in the camera, just looking right at the camera. Yeah, like yeah. This, that yeah, looks yeah. terrible. Oh, it really? Looks, you thought that looked bad? I think it looks- in the back, right? Where you yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, he yeah. slowly dissolves. It just yeah. looks, it looks like a cartoon. It looks really? terrible. Okay. In my eyes, it looks terrible. I just, I can't, it, they, they, I don't know if it's, I'd have to watch it again to see how they did it in terms of the actor's face. If, yeah. if it's his own CG stunt double, or if they put his face on, his actual face on to the, the model, it just, it looks, bad i know yeah. what they were trying to do it just yeah it didn't, didn't like it. it was they held on the shot too long yeah and it was in too yeah. much slow motion it yeah. just it your eyes pick it up it looks wrong to me whereas like th- when he did the when he got him with the piano wire or whatever yeah. wire he carries with him yeah. um that looked good on the oh, bike i love that because it was a quick yeah. dissolve oh, so you, cool and you could see the detail into the dissolve like the skin's going but then you yeah. still see the bones going underneath and such yeah mm-hmm. um the physics on it looked better too than it did in the original in the first blade yeah. So yeah. overall, in some shots, it does look better. But in this case, for that one shot where he's, they, they hold on it long, I know they wanted to show that it's come a long way. And I guess it has in comparison to like if they did the same type of shot in the first blade. Yeah. But in this one, it just doesn't like it still doesn't work. It's just yeah. too much. Like, yeah, yeah. They got cocky. No, I, I agree. Um, for me, the CG in this scene, I'm 100% okay with the, the jumping out the window. I'm cool with the the bike and the tire situation the, yeah the piano string yeah the tactical gear i agree with you it it gives me more of a batman vibe yes that, that tactical, yeah that for sure that he's wearing in this one it feels more batman so, than yeah the, comic booky it's yeah. Very, yeah it's getting yeah. it's getting more close to the fantastical nature of everything yeah exactly so yeah. i'm i'm with both you guys on on that what the janky cg for me is that sword fight yeah yeah with with oh. the, what's her name in in his in his den or what? I've got a lot of janky stuff about that, that one. one. Sure, that one to me was just like I don't. You're probably gonna touch on it later, but yep, that yep. one for me is the jankiest one of all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think there's only one more thing I want to talk about here is is the um uh, the disintegrations themselves. They're much different. Like you guys already mm-hmm. touched on that, but where the first one uh, they they actually really emphasize the combustibility of vampires here. It's almost mm-hmm. like they're it's like a it's like a volcano ish thing going on there. Did you guys like that? They're slower too. Like the, the, the vampires combusting are slower in this, whereas the first one, it was much, it was much faster, less flamey, I guess. Um, what do you guys think of that? Like the differences there? Yeah. It, it doesn't mean anything to me for, 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 for that sense. Like it, yeah. For, Fair for enough. me, the, the death of the vampires, whether it was the slow dissolve that we got yeah. in this one versus the quick combustion in the first movie. Yeah. Either way, I'm good because they kept with the same style of death. Yeah, you know, yeah. it didn't it didn't really change. Like when you change directors and you change a whole bunch of stuff in a movie, like when you're going from one to two, and you're switching directors, you usually get a change that you're kind of like that never happened in the first one. Especially when it comes right. to like character deaths, where it's like for sure, yeah, you, you never really get the same character death when you change directors. You're you're a big slasher fan, I'm sure. Like yeah. some of the the blood scenes where it's like Jason kills somebody one way and then. In oh, Jason buddy. two, he yeah. stabs someone the exact same way he did in, fir- in season in first one, and you're like, the blood splatter is a little different. He didn't yeah. use that knife the right way. Like that was or, or sometimes they, different. Sometimes yeah, yeah, they yeah. gain supernatural strength and like are able to crush your skull. Yeah, for, like inexplicably. Like, yeah, exactly. For so, whatever reason. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's just it, it does look a little bit different, but I don't like to me there wasn't. It came a little bit of a ways 
but it's not something that I feel like the common movie goer would really pay much attention to. Sure. Sadly, sure. because I know that a lot of work went into it. Oh yeah. No, um, I, I, I really do enjoy the, like the, the changes here. Like, again, I yeah. love seeing something different. That's why I love this series. Cause it's so different. This is one of those things that jumped out at me when I was watching it. But like, I, I totally understand that part of like, this is, this is a detail and, and uh, it's not something that like everyone's going to notice. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Word. um all right so we get uh the introduction to scud uh we get the vampires uh so basically blade blade goes back to the blade cave uh he, he's got a new person working for him because whistler's been out of commission for two years and uh, he brings whistler back whistler has been turned or uh he's actually a vampire so he goes to cure him and sees what happens maybe he'll live maybe he won't uh and uh, we get vampires invading the Blade Cave and we get the God Lights scene, the God Lights action sequence. And I'm sure we have lots to say about this one. Um, <laughs> quick, quick point. Norman Reedus, the guy who plays Scud, um, he wasn't like exceptionally popular at the time because I think he's much more popular now, especially with The Walking, the walking yeah, Dead. Yeah. The yeah. Walking Dead. He, but he, he was popular in smaller circles then because I think at that point he had already done Boond Boondock Saints. Boondock Saints, yeah, correct. Boondock, yeah. yeah, he was in Boondock Saints. Yeah, he was in Mimic. He was in uh, Del Toro's previous film. Um, but he's claimed to minor fame was was Boondock Saints. So uh, people like who saw him, who were kind of in that indie movie, uh, Tarantino-ish kind of crime thriller films that were coming out, they would know. They would know who this guy was. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about the the ninja vampires. Um, mm. So first things first, I'd like to say something nice about this scene. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, them swinging from the rafters when they first infiltrate the blade cave is great. I actually really like that shot. It is they are CG stunt stunt doubles, but that is the exact perfect use of a CG stunt stunt double. Dark. It's a dark scene. Um, they're very, you're showing how nimble these guys are. And then you shift seamlessly to live action where they drop from the rafters down to the, down to the ground. Very cool. And in general, I think this fight scene is actually really well choreographed yes. because you've got the multiple attackers thing and they do that really well. Like, I don't think yeah. a lot of movies do that really well where, where blade actually at one point, I feel like he's fighting with his scabbard and his sword and he's got one in front of him, one behind him. And he's kind of like, yeah, fending yeah. off attacks from like the front and behind, and I'm like, this is fucking cool. Like, I, this is yeah. great. I, and I then, like, yeah, sorry. I was gonna say, I like it, to that point. He starts off the fight without actually drawing his sword. He's just yeah. fucking. I think it was Nissa he was fighting at the beginning. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He was using and he's like just a, a staff. Not even trying. He's. I think he's got one arm behind his back. Yeah. Like he's yeah. just yeah. going like this, and then <laughs> locks up her swords, pushes her back, and then it's not until Assad jumps in. That he actually draws it out, and you're exactly right. He's fighting with using both the sword and the yeah. whatever the hell you said it, it's called and the scabbard, the scabbard, scabbard, scabbard. Yeah, she. Um, yeah. The, and Assad, the other vampire. I like the dynamics in this scene because he's he's basically making sure everyone else is staying away. Yeah. They're not trying to kill Blade. They, mm -hmm. She's just like, okay, let me give it a go. Let me let me test this out and see, like, you know, if the training that was not well thought out at yeah. all. No, because poor he, planning. He clearly sees she's in trouble. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he he rips the gun apart and then goes in to, to help her with the crazy jump kick. I don't know if you guys yeah. noticed that he goes, yeah. this is like a Liu Kang Johnny Cage yeah. thing where he goes flying through the frame. <laughs> and I was a complete say, that whole that whole fight scene has like a whole lot of like Street Fighter esque moves yes. in it, like yeah. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. Even even the way they frame it when they're they've got the god lights like yeah. in the very background, it literally yeah. looks like and obviously is kind of in some regards it, a it, video game. Yeah, like, just yeah. side scrolling video game. Yeah, it's, it looks like crazy. A, and then it turns into the PlayStation Two Mortal Kombat. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> so let's talk about this. We've got a couple of shots in here where he does kind of a backflip off a cabinet and from the background or the foreground, and then the most offensive part of this scene is when uh they're fighting in front of the god lights and they are full on rubber cg uh dolls yes <laughs> basically yes. fighting yes. and it's it was it was bad then you know yeah. like it was it wasn't particularly it good yeah it stuck it out then out. but now it's just it's like oh it's just laughable <laughs> unfortunately <Yeah. laughs> yeah. unfortunately yeah. um but uh, but yeah, so this this fight scene goes, uh, and I love the idea of the the, the god lights. He calls them the god lights. I always like that. That was pretty neat. I hate um, it. 
You hate, hate the him. God. You hate that name. Hate him. Hate him so much. Because okay, so Why? here's the thing about the God Lights. Why? Are I, they you know, UV God Lights? See, first I of all, that's my first were. question. Yeah, right. I thought they were, but she, yeah, they, I thought they are because they're wearing the full suits, right? Yeah, so. I thought they were. So, they thought they were. That yeah. was my that was my thought. But then later in the movie, you see Reinhardt holding out his fully gloved, armored, covered skin or hands, yes. yeah, and right. is getting profusely burned. Profusely, right. I don't know profusely. if it's a word. I don't know. If I don't that's know. A word. I, I'm pretty sure Mike Tyson said it, so it's a Mike Tyson <laughs> word. But <laughs> the uh, I don't understand why that would work, and those god lights don't instantly fry them if they are UV. Okay, so, so first of all, let's yeah, just, okay. let's all just right. say that's an inconsistency. Now, all right. then we could say, well, then they must not be god lights to keep things consistent in the movie. Okay, so let's talk about that. Blade and Scud supposedly said, you know what this dark lair needs some lights and they say what about the ones in the rafters not enough light okay so what do you want to do let's take the brightest light that you can find like the b- brightest light oh you want to hang it from the ceiling no let's get a thousand of them put them against the wall and not turn them on oh and let's give them a really cool name let's call them god lights <laughs> to to what end i don't know but if vampires show up let's turn them on but they're so, not uv lights well then uh... it's fine it's fine <laughs> I just, I don't understand it. And he said, turn on the God lights. Like they were going to do something and they did nothing. So, so the way, I mean, Antoine, I know you probably have a thought on this, but my, (laughs) my, my take on my take on this is that uh, later you it's revealed that Scud is a mole, basically uh, one of Damascus familiars and he's been feeding them information, lets them in essentially to the blade later layer, lets them know where they are and the security system stuff. They know about the God lights. Okay. They are UV lights. The suits they are wearing are UV repellent. That's what I thought the whole idea was the full on goggles, full on suit, the suit being like, like, you know, the space suits from like the first movie, essentially like an evolution of that. So right. they can, so even if the God lights turn on they're they're not going to be instantly fried. That was my, right. that makes sense. So, so then but, here's my other question to that then. Yeah. At the end, Nessa wants to see the sunrise. Yeah. Her stupid ass could have seen the sunrise if she was yeah. wearing that goddamn suit. True. <laughs> That's so true. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 And yeah. also, like, if they have these awesome suits, why the fuck aren't they wearing it to go and kill the Reapers with a bomb with a bunch of UV lights? Like, it just makes no sense. Yes. No, you're you're you guys aren't wrong. You're not wrong. I know <laughs> this movie. We're just, we're, just, we're just poking holes where we don't need yeah, to poke. Yeah. Holes. Oh, oh, there <laughs> this, are more to poke. There, yeah. This this movie will turn into a pin cushion by the time we're done with it. Yeah, that's for sure. Anyways, um, I think I've yeah. said all I had to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, oh, oh, what? One more thing I wanted to mention. Yep, just yep. good, good old Whistler dialogue. <laughs> Our operation. I built this operation. You asswife. <laughs> like just <laughs> he full fuck- on old crotchety man. Just. Yelling at the young guy that took his job. Yeah, I love it. I love his dialogue in this movie is just fantastic. It's oh, so buddy. funny. Oh. Yeah, so funny. Um, all right. So uh, uh, basically, they've come. These vampires have come after their little uh, fight session slash workout. Um, they they come to offer a blade of truce because they have this problem where they have something called the Reapers that are not attacking humans for their blood. They're attacking vampires. And I like I actually like Whistler's line here later is like they're just freaking out because they're no longer top of the food chain and I actually do I appreciate I I, like his delivery is great and the line is good and kind of sums things up but uh, Blade goes Blade Scud and Whistler are taken to uh, the lair basically like a vampire lair in Prague Um, and they meet uh, Damaskinos who is kind of like the head honcho and then they meet the blood pack who are folks that are uh, the team that's been hired uh, hired trained trained presumably being paid uh top dollar probably uh but they can't afford clothes half of them are not wearing shirts anyway so um uh uh trained to kill blade so one uh, uh interesting little fact i don't know if you guys noticed in the helicopter ride when they're going there like uh, that that's actually not wesley uh, snipes yeah in that i scene. noticed that <laughs> it's yeah. like it's, oh, it's, it's not it's, eh? yeah it's not he wasn't there for that he wasn't able to come in he was like filming like that happens at least two more times in this movie 
or at oh, least I one more time that I can think of. Okay. Um, but uh, where where he's taking his serum and Nisa's talking to him, but he doesn't turn around to face her. That's not him either. Uh, and if you look at his if you look at his face or the part of his face that you can see, you can tell it's not Wesley Snipes. It's an oh. interesting little thing because if you I never look looked at that it, hard, <laughs> if you look at it again, it's blatantly obvious it's not Wesley Snipes. Like <laughs> like if you watch that scene again, but like yeah. it's not something that I noticed right away. Obviously, but now that you mention like, it, I'm gonna go back and watch it again just for those scenes to see if I can see if it's on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, check it out. It's yeah, it's funny right. because it's like it's so blatantly obvious, and you'll never be able to unsee it. That's the problem, right? Like you watch the movie, you're like, that's not Wesley Snipes. Yeah. Um, so we meet Damaskinos played by a dude named Thomas Kretschmann. Uh, I think the only credit I, I really remember this guy from is uh, King Kong, like Peter Jackson's King Kong. He plays the captain of the, uh, of the ship. Unrecognizable here because covered in uh, makeup. Um I love Del Toro's monster designs and it's all over this movie. Like he's gone monster crazy and it's just great. Uh, and Demaskinos, he's got this allusions to these older vampire style, like the older vampires get the yeah. more Nosferatu-ish German expressionist film-ish. They, they start to look like that classic vampire bald, like longer ears, pay really, really pale skin, that classic vampire look. I do, I do like the nod to old vampire myth in Damaskinos. Um, the lawyer, I can't, I, I don't have his name offhand, but Harder his line. Cunin. Oh yeah. So his lines completely dubbed by another British actor because his Czech accent was too thick for this movie. Yeah. So they just dubbed his lines because nobody could understand <laughs> what he was saying. And if you want to hear what he kind of sounds like Hellboy one, this guy plays um, Rasputin in oh, Hellboy he? one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, again, like I would never think, cause like the, he doesn't look anything like he does in, uh, in Hellboy, but he keeps his accent in in Hellboy, so you can hear what he sounds like. Some of the deleted scenes actually have just his original lines, and it is a thick accent, and you, it's hard. It, it'd be hard for an English speaking audience to to pick up on that. So, just a couple of little fun tidbits there. Let's talk about the blood pack. This is fucking catnip for me. Like yeah. what they're doing here. This is like my jam. I'm like, oh, it's a team, and everyone's from different places, different cultures, getting welded in. Um, we've got, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's like the, the, the magnificent seven dirty dozen thing going on. Right. right and I right. fucking, I just eat that stuff up. I love it. Um, in particular light hammer was my favorite. When I watched this movie, I was like fucking blown away by this guy's design with the tattoos on his face under his eyes. Um, and his weapon is a hammer with the spike coming out of the other end. I'm like, Oh fuck. It was just too good. Him and snowman who is played by none other than Donnie Yen, who was also an action yeah. choreographer on the film as well. And Snowman doesn't talk. It's so great. He just does these weird gestures with uh, with his hands. Um, fantastic, fantastic stuff. What did you, you guys... Oh, well, and then uh, obviously Wesley uh, Blade meets Ron Perlman, who's, <laughs> uh, who's, just, who's also just great. And he's just a sleazy scumbag in this movie. And I fucking love it. Um, and we get this great scene between uh, Wesley and, and Ron Perlman where he introduces, and it makes me laugh to this day. I think it's the fuck, it's fucking funny. But we also get probably the most confusing line in this movie. When I first watched this movie, I didn't understand like what, what this meant. Uh, Ron Perlman's Reinhardt, who is the leader of this blood pack, um, trained to kill Blade, asks Blade, he's like, can you blush? So when I first watched this movie, I'm like, what the racist? fuck? Is, what does that mean? Is he is he being racist or is he talking about like vampires don't, you know, like I get, get pale and he's half human so he can actually blush and they can't. It's like it, was, it got real cerebral for me for a little while. And I was like, I couldn't I didn't understand. <laughs> and at the end of the movie, Wesley Snipes says the line back to him before he kills him. And that also didn't make any sense to me. And I'm like. So I was I was I was wondering what your take was. Is this just a racist thing? Is this like because he's black, you wouldn't be able to see him blush? Um, yes. And yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's like, that's I'm I so surprised. Yeah. No, I was I was confused when I first saw it. I, I, I like I assumed it was racist, but I thought there was just something more to it. It just seemed like a little shallow. But um, but yeah. So uh, this actually line uh, later I learned that this line was 
uh, actually ripped from an experience that Wesley Wesley Snipes actually had. Like an Austrian somewhere asked him, "Hey, like actually asked him seriously, can you blush?" Uh, you know, being <laughs> black. And uh, Guillermo del Toro heard the story, like he was telling on set. He's like, "Yo, we need to put that in the fucking movie." <laughs> that's what. Jesus. That's that's Jesus. what he. That's what. And and um, the other thing that I want to mention here with Ron Perlman's character, they don't really touch on it. I don't know how much they touch on in the movie, but they're really setting him up to be a Nazi. Like he's a, he's a Nazi because Blade actually calls him Adolf later. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does and it's like this thing where like these guys are all pure blood. So they're old enough to be, he's old enough to actually be a, a Nazi, like an yeah. active Nazi at the time. So this whole like, you know, being a complete racist, like makes sense. The other thing at the time of watching the movie that got me confused was because there's a black guy on his team. You know, and that was the other thing. I'm like, is he, if he's racist, then he's talking shit about this guy over here who he works with. And I'm just like, ah, oh, I was I was confused. I assumed it was racism, but I thought there was something else to it. But there, there are deleted scenes where the lawyer actually has like detailed documents of Assad's reports to HR about his dealings with Reinhardt. So yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nobody yeah. cared. Yeah. Nobody yeah. Cared. Um, um, so what do you guys think of this whole scene with meeting the blood pack? And Damaskinos. You want to go first, Antoine? Yeah, like you can go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. So the blood pack is the missed opportunity of the film. Um, mm -hmm. Every one of them visually, except for L L Lorraine. What's the, what's Lightheart? Uh, Lightheart. Verlaine. Light Hammers. Verlaine. Verlaine. Verlaine, yeah. I, she's the only one that wasn't interesting to me. Yeah. And, and that's a shame. Like, I feel like they could have done something a little more interesting with her. She just kind of was damsel in distress. And that was really, damsel in distress and just kind of like a, side piece to, to light hammer it was disappointing i was really hoping for something else kind yeah, of me too. yeah me too the rest of them all had a little something to them at least i mean priest didn't get much but his line he got the lines like he got more lines than most of them yeah um, and yeah. they were at least kind of like the way that he says look at all of these what does he say and half yeah, these, these motherfuckers aren't even turned let's just yeah. kill all of them and that's a great yeah. line it's such a good line because yeah. i think <laughs> he's with assad and assad looks at him like it's just, it's the, oh my god did you guys notice like assad the the look assad gives him is fucking perfect he's just like yeah <laughs> it's like dude that's a lot um also the actor that like uh, I, I feel like i've recognized the actor that plays assad and i just i i think he's mm -hmm. actually like He's certainly underused in this film, but I just, I like the way that he performs in this. I just, he's, he's got a slickness to him. Like he's the James Bond of yeah. the blood pack. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, just it, I, I could, I could watch a whole movie on this guys. Yeah. Um, Reinhardt, not the character, I, I guess Ron Perlman has an incredible way of making his characters likable, even though they are absolutely deplorable. Yes, you're right. <laughs> and there are times in this, especially when they go hunting for the Reapers the second time, where you're actually rooting for this character. Yeah. And at the same time, you're like, oh, wait, he's a dick. Yeah, I totally. But dick. he's kind of yeah. likable in some way, too, in some some regards. But then he goes back to full asshole. He's, it's, he skates the line of kind of like being likable and not likable it's really he's an interesting character that's the sign um, of a great villain yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. that's a sign yeah, of a great villain sure. a great villain is someone that you can love and hate at the exact same time and you're just, just you're beating yourself up on the inside it's like he's bad i'm not supposed to like him yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> but right. the most the most the most interesting character of them all is the lawyer and here's why this guy does so much in this movie he's all over the place <laughs> yes. he's going above and beyond his calling like he's getting an outstanding on his ratings this year. Oh, his, absolutely. This guy's definitely going assessment. over his billable hours. There's no way that guy is like, he is, he's going above and beyond the cause. Like he's marching into like, into the sewers after everything's all said and done with a bunch of trained, like, I guess, you know, hit the, the vampire SWAT team. Like he doesn't need to be there, but he's going there in his, in his full suit, just like talking to yep. people. He's the one that's extracting DNA from blade. He's not qualified for that. He's a lawyer. Like this guy does a lot. He also has a he has a great line when he comes in. And he's like, uh, he meets Blade, and he's yeah. it's like, you're human. And he's like, barely, I'm a lawyer. That's <laughs> such a good line. Well, yeah, he's right. he's an interesting part of this film because I feel yeah. like he gets a lot to do. He gets more to do than most of the fucking blood pack. Than Verlaine. Yes. Than he Verlaine. gets more to do than Verlaine. <laughs> yeah. And Snowman, which yeah, is the most true. unfortunate part. Oh, he's... yeah. I want to talk about that later. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. For sure. Anyways, yeah. So I just want yeah. to throw that out there. Antoine, uh, what do you what do you make of the blood pack? The blood pack to me was a waste of time. Oh, they, re oh. they really could have they really could have done the whole movie without him. 
Really? Oh, he's okay. right. I, I, I agree the whole with movie with just Reinhardt, Assad, Nessa, done. Yeah. They could have yeah. done with just them three. Because by the end of the movie, that's all you have left. Yes. Yeah. I think but you need that to you need true. to kill some people, right? You need to you need a I body think, count. Yeah, but you could have yeah. not had a whole scene of introducing them, and then you could just have been like, "Here's our pack, let's roll." Yeah, and yeah. then a whole bunch of guys would get killed off. Like, interesting. That's an interesting take because I I, I see where you're I see where you're coming from. The thing is, I don't think they waste a lot of time on the blood pack characters themselves because a lot of it is visual storytelling. Like you see like someone like Lighthammer, I think he's supposed to be like an indigenous, uh, like an indigenous um, uh, like person with the tribal tattoos. And you see like uh, um, Priest um, uh, and and he's like, he like the way they're dressed and and like Snowman with the, like the, like the, the lettering on his armor, like all of that stuff's all visual. Like they don't go into any detail like there. but I think, you know, I see where you're coming from that, like, they are basically they're fodder. Like, you need to kill somebody. Mm-hmm. A couple of teen dynamics there. But, uh, but yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think you're wrong. But I love, I love that shit. I like, I love seeing that creativity on, like, yeah. on display. Um, uh, the one thing I'd mention is that Mark, 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 Matt Schultz, okay, is an actor Chupa. who plays Chupa. Yeah. Um, he is the same dude who is in Blade 1, and he plays Kreese, the guy who grabs Blade's sword and says, hey, I got his pig sticker, and he gets his hand, his hand blown off with the end of uh, Blade's sword. It's the same actor <laughs> in both movies. Really? He's in Blade 1 and yeah. Blade 2. So I know oh. that. I knew yeah. that for years because you told me. Yeah. I would never have caught it. I still yeah. look out for it. Every single time I've watched the new the, the 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 first blade, I still don't see it. The guy looks unrecognizable. He gains he's like yeah. 70 pounds of muscle. Yeah, like between like both a lot of weight. Because there's yes. no way there's he looks the same. Because he's also yeah. in Fast and the Furious as well. That's right. Again, yeah. 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 Like yeah. he I doesn't look like two... he kind of his face looks the same in Fast and the Furious, but his body's completely different in all yeah. the movies. Yeah, every movie he's yeah, got every movie completely, he's completely, body. completely different. If you go to Matt Schultz's uh, house in the Hollywood Hills, it's just it's his head is just in a jar, and he's got these different bodies that he puts his head on like every day when he goes into work. It's Futurama for him. <laughs> yeah, he's going yeah, into a vat. Right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, cool. Okay, so we we introduced the blood pack. Uh, we also see Blade loosening up here. No, the gravelly voice is kind of gone. That Christian Bale voice is gone. Blade's having fun. He likes his life. He's not really broody like he was in the last movie. So I like all of these changes where he's loosened up. There's more comedy here. He's enjoying things a little bit more. Um, Blood pack suits up. And then we get our first, uh, you know, really big action sequence at this, at this club, (laughs) unfortunately titled the house of pain. Um, EDTA makes a comeback. I thought that was a nice little nod to the first movie with the anticoagulant that explodes, explodey vampires. Um, I was kind of sad that stayed a blade didn't did, his shotgun was gone. It was kind of given to Reinhardt. Like Reinhardt had the uh, stake shotgun and blade just yeah. switched over to a different set of weapons here. I'm going to drop a couple of song alerts here, guys, because this soundtrack to this movie was yes. a big part of the move, the film for me, the entire soundtrack was put together where they got these electronic artists to mix with uh, uh, to collaborate with uh, hip hop artists. This scene was really cheesy shot of the blood pack walking in slow motion is set to a song called by massive attack and most deaf called I against I fucking best song on that soundtrack. I still listen to that song today. Really, really like that tune. Well, um, most deaf. You can't, you can't go wrong with the most. Deaf yeah, guy. that's no, right. No, he crushes it too. And that's one of the amalgamations that really does work on this. So, Cause not a lot of them work. They're mixed success. I'd say on the, on that, the, on the soundtrack, but this one was just like, yeah. You know, peanut butter and chocolate. It's fucking really, really good. Um, so we step into the club and they play another thumper of a track, not on the official soundtrack, but this is a song called uh, called Your Blood is Pumping by Voodoo and Serrano. And when they get into the club, I feel like they were just trying to outdo the first movie. They're like, oh, you saw that club in the first movie? Take a yeah. look at this shit. There's like 8,000 people in here. <laughs> um, and you get this, you get this really, Blade smiles a lot in this movie. And this is one of the scenes that he smiles in. I just think it's, I think it's fun. They're having a lot of fun making this. Um, so <laughs> the team splits up and searches for clues, uh, like fucking Scooby-Doo. Anything and you kind of look suspicious. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. Reinhardt. <laughs> yeah, anything that looks suspicious. And this is where Priest has that fucking line where he's like, half yeah. of these are all turned vampires. Why don't we just fucking kill everyone just to be sure? <laughs> Yeah, and I was very, like, it's a very Hitler esque <laughs> Nazi yeah. term to say right there. <laughs> right, exactly. And and unfortunately, unfortunately, the this is the only time they really because you forget that these guys are pure bloods, right? They don't really bring that up again. And I found that to be a really interesting dynamic from the first movie. And they and they they they're like, oh, this is interesting. Let's 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 talk about this. Cause even the vampires that are in here hate the vampires in the club the blood pack hates these other guys and they really do show it later in this action sequence um but it's an interesting thing that you don't really get into uh later um so this entire scene is kind of edited simultaneously like all of the members of the team experience their own sort of reaper encounter and then which uh, leads culminates to the fact that they say that bullet silver don't do shit they find out that uv lights do uh and you get the reveal of what makes the Reaper super special uh, here because they never hint at this. None of the trailers hinted at this. None of the pre-production stuff hinted at this. Uh, even in the trailer for Blade 2, I don't know, you guys probably don't remember this, but I watched them so much. There is a scene where uh, Reaper's looking in the camera and he turns his eyes like this and he turns his jaw and it's just the Reaper face, regular Reaper face. In the movie, the same shot is there, but the entire bottom of the jaw is replaced cg with the open jaw so they use the regular plate for the trailer so it doesn't ruin the surprise and in the movie they use the same shot and they obviously show the jaw so this whole idea of the reaper's chin opening up and the stinger coming out so what did you guys make of this action sequence in in the house of pain mm, yeah, i like it it yeah. was it was it was neat that you see you see because you've got these these concurrent stories going on at the same time. Yeah, it's interesting to see the Reapers behave similarly across all three experiences. It's the blood pack behaves differently, which makes it interesting and very the way that it's edited makes it like suspense very fast paced and, and yeah. suspenseful. Yeah, I like a, that. I like this a lot. Yeah. I think yeah. that that's what a lot like the first movie was really missing. Didn't have any suspense. No. Um, it, it, the first movie was more of an action movie than it was a horror film. This one, they introduced the horror. They introduced, they reintroduced that, and they try to build that suspense. Um, I love the scene with Lighthammer. Um, I love the scene with Snowman. He gets his moment yeah. here, mm -hmm. and he fights this. He fights this Reaper, and it's a badass moment. And uh, and the Reaper would rather tear out its own innards than fight him. That's the way yeah. I saw that moment where yeah. it's like he pins the Reaper to the wall with the sword and he comes over and he points. I love it. Cause he's such a badass. He points at him. He's like, you're not getting away. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and he gets away by tearing out his insides and climbing up the wall. He'd rather do that than, than fight snowman. I mean, I would do the same thing. I just cut and run like literally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I wouldn't fuck with snowman. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So uh, Antoine, any thoughts on this, uh, on this action sequence? Yeah, no, I, I love this actually. I love the fact that everybody has like their own time to shine um, without yeah. taking too much away from everything else because that could have easily have been drawn out way more than it needed to be. Right. Um, I love the fact that I, I, I was about to call him Ip Man, but it's yeah. Snowman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, yeah. like young Ip Man is out. See, I just did it. He's out, yeah. there, <laughs> he's out there beating ass. And then yeah. um, I also like the fact that uh, Lighthammer when he gets beat and he has yeah. the mark on his neck, he just, yeah. he just covers it up. He covers it up. Yeah. And yeah. He's like, I'm okay. I'm going to yeah. keep rolling. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I thought something more was going to happen with that, but you know, another thing that didn't really pan out to exactly to, to any kind of fruition afterwards. Cause I thought that was going to be a big turning point where they're going to get back to the layer or something. And then he's going to turn, but nothing really comes to fruition with that. Right. Fight that he gets. Nothing, nothing, yeah, nothing major, I'd say. Yeah, I nothing think major. Yeah. No, I think you're I think you're right about that. In fact, it's almost it's it's major in a negative direction because it takes out snowman. Oh my god. Yeah, I want yeah. to yeah. let's talk about that right now. Way. Snowman yeah. gets done fucking so dirty. Yeah. I was really upset when I was watching this in the theater. I was upset back in the day. And when I'm watching it now, I'm like, fuck, I know it's gonna happen, but part of me is like, maybe I'm, you know, maybe it's gonna be different this time. But no, Snowman dies off fucking camera. Yep. Yeah. 
and and so those are awful. those yeah those are my two favorite characters i would watch a 30 minute fight scene between light hammer and snowman because the styles are completely different we got the heavy like the heavy weapon with the hammer and you got the sword the fast mover i'm like that would be that's a whole other like yeah. 30 minute short film in my in my opinion uh but he dies off camera i was like oh god damn yeah i'm dirty man it was um unfortunate. yeah the one other thing i liked about this this club sequence was uh Chupa and Reinhardt are fully executing priest's plan to kill everybody in this fucking club. Yes, okay. <laughs> Chupa has got the biggest fucking gun I have ever seen someone hold. And he's got two barrels of, uh, of ammunition. <laughs> and he's, he's like, I'm trying to shoot this Reaper who's running through a crowd and he's just holding the trigger down and yeah. he's just following him. And you see the Reaper is getting hit, but also all these other vampires are trying just to busting die. everywhere. Yeah, like, it's just so good. <laughs> it's like, these guys do not give a fuck. Priest would be proud if he were alive. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Poor guy was getting his ass kicked. I almost feel bad for Priest the way he gets done in this movie. He gets fucked up. It's yeah. like the vampire works him to the point where he's like, it's all hit, like he's knocked him out. Like he's out cold. And then yeah. he and then he opens the maw up. Yeah. Um yeah, cool. Uh, and then we get the the fight in the cathedral, which is a bit more whimsical fight between uh between Nomak and Blade. I, I, I enjoy this fight. It's short, it's not too long, but uh, it's got a little more of that wire work. And this is definitely a Donnie Yen choreographed yeah. fight yes. sequence. Yeah, cool little thing. Uh, so they regroup. They manage to catch a Reaper in all of this. And uh, uh, and basically they have what, it, like the most Guillermo del Toro thing <laughs> imaginable, which is an autopsy scene on the, on yeah. the the cadaver of the of the of the, the reaper and they show that the body is still active even though the brain is dead it's a cool disgusting little scene um but again we're really jumping into the monster movie stuff here right mm -hmm. um then we come back to uh we basically see these guys suit up and they suit up to i think it's paul oakenfold and ice cube uh a track by them to off of the soundtrack and uh, and then they go back to the sewers and we have this split up and search for clues like Scooby-Doo again. And a very similarly edited uh, sequence that's trying to build up suspense over time with multiple groups. Um, so what did you guys make of this section of the movie? The whole going back, regroup, and then coming back to the sewers leading up to the uh, leading up to um, the light bomb, I guess you can call it. So, so let's talk about stupidity for a second. Oh, now, yeah, let's do now. it. Scud is working with Demoskinos. He's one of yes. his familiars. He's got a, a direct line to Demoskinos. I would imagine Demoskinos is like, look, man, listen, we've got these Reapers. You're real smart. The only thing that hurts them is sunlight. What can you do? He waits until halfway through the film to build this shit. And now they have this light bomb that they're going to explode. Oh, okay. So one thing I'd, pa I'd pause right okay. there. Yeah. I don't think they they know about they don't know anything about the Reapers. Like they don't know their weaknesses. Of course they do. No, I think they he don't. Does. I think he does. No, Demis I don't think he knows absolutely. I think the Mosquitoes knows because he no, was trying to get he was trying to eliminate the the fact that they were allergic to sun. Yeah, he absolutely knows. Yeah, he knows that he got everything else taken out of them except for the sunlight part, and he was trying to get rid of it. So he knows that the sunlight's the only weakness that they have. Correct. I didn't put that together. I thought like they were all they were. Just, he was panicking because he created something he didn't understand. So he basically put this team together to eliminate them and whatever they learned. No, I think no, he put the he team together learn. because they, they were breeding too quickly. Yeah, they have to feed too often. Yeah. Right. And exactly. it's not a, a feed to death like some vampires can do. Like vampires, some vampires can drain you to your yeah, death yeah, yeah. And some can turn you. These guys, as soon as they bite you and they they drain you, you yeah. still turn. Yeah. yeah immune to silver soon even sunlight like that was his uh, that's one of the reasons yeah. he brings in blade too is to yeah. get him close enough to be able to take him down interesting and okay and harvest his everything okay so, I'm, anyways I'm harvest is everything yeah, that's that, true. that being said <laughs> it, it, it's entirely possible scud knew how to do this which is why it was so easy for them to do it when whistler tried in the past so maybe they already knew it so they came in yeah. prepared but like you'd think they'd give them a heads up going in like listen these reapers you need to use the sunlight okay cool like they had UV yeah. technology, so it doesn't. It to me, it doesn't make sense that they didn't use the sunlight. Yeah, I mean, Blade alludes to it. He's like, 
they didn't know going in, like the blood pack didn't know about this. Right. Yeah. But in any case, they knew. So it just, uh, ah, whatever. Anywho, um, what was the other thing I wanted to mention? I wonder if garlic worked on them. <laughs> no, they nobody tried that before. No, they <laughs> tried. Didn't they try that on the cadaver? They tried a whole bunch of stuff on the cadaver. And then the only thing that made it like move at all was blood. Yeah. 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 Sorry. No, I, what I meant to say was like, they, it was garlic, silver, and sunlight for regular vampires. Right. They only tried silver and sunlight sunlight obviously worked but i'm wondering i'm wondering if uh if like garlic would have worked uh it's a dumb question but anyway valuable (laughs) we'll go in there like with some some good italian food um (laughs) also it didn't so reinhardt was the one that initially tried to kick off the bomb now i had a question about this he set the timer to 10 seconds Did you see the bomb? Because I did. Yeah. And where was he going to go? Like, what was his plan for a 10 second timer to get out of there? Like, you'd think it would be a longer timer. I just, I, that blew me away when I saw that. Like, I saw him go to 10 seconds and I didn't even know it was going to happen. I just knew 10 seconds was too short of a time. And he's not particularly fast. You do see no. him run in this movie, and he's no. a bit of a chunky monkey. He's yeah. a chunky monkey. He's got old man run. Like when you see like Stallone and yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger in their action yeah. movies in the, the now, they're run. Yeah, it's very <laughs> got- slow and lumbering. Like yeah. I'd rather see a CG stunt double with no weight to it of Stallone <laughs> running than him actually running. It is it's upsetting. And Perlman's is yeah, Perlman's run Perlman. is is like he's on the verge of cardiac arrest yeah actually now that this makes me think of another del toro movie the first hellboy where there's a bridge collapsing and ron perlman's running away i guess it's probably a stunt double but just that moment where like the pieces are falling and he's like running on air yeah oh yeah 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 i remember remember that yeah it is a weird shot you're absolutely right yeah um but yeah, no, it, the, then there's just, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of weird editing to this scene. There are some shots that I'm just like, that's a weird shot. Yeah. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but like when Assad gets attacked by the vampires, all the vampires rush up from the water and attack. Yeah. Them, yeah. And they, they all pile on except for one of them. One of them gets his gun lifts it up over his head and then just starts walking off screen like this. Yeah. Oh my God. Have that's you so seen funny. That? Oh, no, I haven't seen that. Haven't, Rewatch that scene. That. Cause it's so funny. Cause they all do. And then there's this one guy that picks up the gun and just starts walking actually towards Nissa. So it's like, <laughs> he, I don't know what happens based on the way that scene is edited, but like all of a sudden this character just goes off screen towards Nissa and then is gone. And you don't know what happens with him. As far as I know, he's going to go and put it on a gun rack or something like that. And <laughs> that then maybe rejoin. Poor, someone missed that in the editing floor, man. So yeah. It's, just, it's so, floor. so weird. Like if that, I rewatch that scene, you'll see it. That's it's, I mean, if we're going to bring up some of this stuff uh, in the cathedral, when blade is walking across the boards, yeah, uh, there's a shot where he's walking across the boards. You actually see the stunt guy for Nomac sitting in the corner going like this. Cause it's all one <laughs> shot where he oh comes the camera comes down and he jumps up onto the boards of the background. But if you look at the background, he's just sitting there like this, getting ready to jump with this uh, cable. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's like this. And then Blade's <laughs> shoulder blocks him. And then you see him jump up and land on the thing. So watch that scene again. He's just like waiting for my cue. <laughs> you know? um, yeah, there is funny stuff like that in this movie. For sure. Um, oh my god! One other That's thing cool. I wanted to mention that I actually loved was Reinhardt's weapons. The the, the yeah the, the guns with the the big axe blades on the outside. Oh yeah, I just mm. thought that was super creative. And seeing him actually use them up close yeah. and use them as a distance weapon too was just like, it was inspired. I was just like, this is such a cool idea. Yeah, correct. Uh, yeah, I so. I agree. I, and he uh he like he ch- he he thirds a vampire. I guess yes. at some point where he just yeah. like chops something. Yeah, he like, does like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. Uh, Antoine, what did you think of this uh, sequence? I, I like the sequence. I like the the, the fight scenes in all of them. Yeah, um, especially the one where <laughs> our boy Whistler is getting his ass beat. Oh my god, he's just he's also he's, he's great, but he's also getting his ass kicked this yeah, entire his ass movie. Kick the entire <laughs> movie, and then like he's getting fisted. This. <laughs> He's getting beat the shit out of him. Yeah. But he somehow sets off the pheromones. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. just like, yeah, yeah. That's I forgot about that back part. He's, yeah. like getting, he's still getting beat up, but he's just laughing. He grabs his goggles. He's like, yep, no, I'm you're, good. You're fucked now, buddy. You're fucked now, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I, it does play out a little like Aliens, like the way the, the whole thing like maps out down there. Yeah, but you're right about Whistler. He's just getting his fucking ass kicked. Oh, and this is this is where the line's from, where he's like, uh, he takes the light, the UV cover off the light so it's brighter. Yeah. And Ron Perlman's character comes back. He's like, yo, can you close oh, yeah. that? That's going to hurt us. And he's like, well, some of us can't see in the dark, you fucking nipple head. <laughs> it was so aggressive. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know. Ron Perlman was actually being a little bit polite. He's, like, yeah. he's giving him good advice. He's like, Look, we're trying to attract them, not scare them off. And yeah. you fucking nipple head. It's like, <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> I have a uh, scientific question for you guys. I have a scientific question yeah, yeah. for you guys. Yeah. Oh, please. <laughs> we're, we're, you're in luck because we are scientists. So, yes. Yeah. So, movie lights, These this UV bomb that goes off. Oh. <laughs> Hey, Alison have to, dives have into the water to protect herself from this UV bomb. Yes. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure light travels through water. Yes. But I will counter you with the does light turn corners? Yeah. <laughs> I love that one. That was that, <laughs> that, that was uh, my uh oh. I look, guys, this I'm gonna I'm gonna come completely clean with you. I've seen and liked some dumb shit in my life. Oh, I have seen, yeah. I've seen love and I've loved some dumb shit. This is the dumbest thing that I like. <laughs> it's got to be the dumbest thing in a movie that has a vampires and vampires who eat other vampires. <laughs> this stands out as being the most unbelievable thing I have ever fucking seen. A light bomb where the light goes whoop and turns a fucking <laughs> corner. And I'm like, you know why? I mean, like you, you talk about Reinhardt setting that timer for 10 seconds. I was like, oh, because you know what? The way light works, he can round a corner real quick and just stand stand back. Not with this fucking light. This light will chase you. It will chase your ass down, sir. You cannot hide from this shit. It'll stop. It'll think about where it wants to go. See you down the hall. Make a sharp left and chase your ass down. That is this light. You know what I like about this light too is it's slow, which is really nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. because they can see the light coming. So this light doesn't travel at the speed of light. It just goes really far. Yeah. Slowly. Yeah. Slowly. You yeah. Know, slowly. Like yeah, yeah. It it uh, it gave it gave up uh its speed for you know uh sentience. So, <laughs> so a, a, as a pseudoscientist, I'm going to say probably not realistic. As an actual scientist, I'd say that's the most realistic thing I've ever seen. <laughs> not a good scientist. Good. <laughs> excellent point. Excellent point, Antoine. I had a lot of fun with that scene when I saw yeah, that shit. That was I, great. I, that was awesome to me because I'm like, we were able to see her underwater. So that means yeah. there's light in the water. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So how are you hiding from the light? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it's funny. Um, we are we are also introduced to uh, uh, Blade's greatest enemy in the entire Blade franchise, uh, tasers. This man does not like tasers. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. And I don't know. Like people should have figured this out a long time ago. We got to stop with the bullets. Stop with the swords, hand to hand, fisticuffs, batons. You know yeah. whatever the fuck it is you guys are using. Just tase this motherfucker. Tase him. He doesn't like it. He goes down like a sack of bricks every time he gets tased. Every time. Every <laughs> more guy. He tased, he's done. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, so Blake gets tased and uh, gets taken back to Damaskinos' lair where all is revealed. Um, we get the reveal that Scud has been his, uh, Damaskinos' operative and he shows him where his glyph is and it is on the inside of his lip interesting weird fact you guys probably might not remember this but again i was eating up all of the advertisements and stuff leading up to the movie there is a poster the first teaser poster released for blade 2 is actually a close-up of a person whose lip is turned down with damaskinos's glyph on the inside of the lip so basically they showed that as the first poster and then obviously the other posters are totally different but but uh it was kind of a weird callback uh, to that because like I was like what the fuck is this poster this is so weird and then watch the movie and you're like ah this is this is the it. payoff for this weird piece of advertisement that they that they yeah. put out there and you get the fact that this bomb that uh, that Blade planted in in Ron Perlman's head was like you know 
was it diffused by Scud? And then it wasn't diffused by Scud because Blade knew that Scud was turned, which is insane to me. Makes the no double sense. cross. <laughs> yeah, the double, we're double stupidity cross. in this movie, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's bananas. And because the whole movie is trying desperately to get you to believe that Chris Christopherson's Whistler is the one that is that is the inside man because yeah. he's tr- they're trying to get you, and it's such a obvious red herring, like heavy handed red herring that it's like it couldn't be anyone other than scud um in this case and then if blade knew that scud was tampering and like giving them information it's like i feel like you would have played things differently you know yeah Um, yeah yeah but uh but you get that great moment where it's like oh it's not a dud and scud fucking explodes he attaches this bomb yeah (laughs) he attaches this bomb to ron perlman's head i'm assuming that this is gonna blow his head up you know (laughs) But it's like he strapped like C4 to his head and his entire body explodes viciously. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, maybe you overdid it with the head exploding bomb thingy. Maybe. I don't know. It just it seemed like a lot. Yeah. You know, it was going to be like a suicide squad explosion. Yes. Like Like you're you're, you're dead. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, not a your whole body disintegrates and turns to like. (laughs) juices everywhere <laughs> i know everybody well, has a, to do their laundry after because they got the splash back it's just it's not it's too much just too much yeah i uh that's that's my favorite line from this podcast juices everywhere just fuck it that's you know what that's that's this movie in a nutshell there is a <laughs> lot of juices in this movie and they <laughs> go fucking everywhere <laughs> okay. um so uh so then we get to, we get uh blades blood uh sorry damaskinos revealing that the, the the virus was designed we get another of the most del toro thing you can have in a movie organs and or babies in jars yeah. uh yeah he takes incubator some, scene yeah. yeah the incubator scene yeah exactly where they're trying to design uh you know like the uh i guess it's a serum for themselves to become daywalkers and uh damaskinos reveals that nisa and um Nomak, our brother and sister. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then promptly leaves as an evil villain should. Uh, and uh, then they go to harvest uh, Blade's blood, just like the first movie. Nothing changes. Uh, they just do it in a weird, in a in an interesting, new and interesting way. Uh, this time that looks really, really painful. Yeah. Um, there's a ton of holes, it just holes everywhere. Juices, really be, juices, yeah. fucking everywhere. Juices everywhere. You should be actually be dead in this one. Yeah, yeah, the amount of blood, a lot like, of stabbing. That that post was like three yeah, yeah, inches in diameter. Yeah. Like that thing was. <laughs> you only saw the ones that went through his arms and legs, but there were some in the middle of the table. Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> he shouldn't be okay. No, he right. Shouldn't be. Also, can we talk about how easily there's there's two things I really want to talk about with this. But the first thing being. Whistler made that look a little too easy, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When he put the fuck he, out of Ron Perlman, like when he, he wasn't when he even did. close. And there was there was no reason to leave him alive. No, nope, not a one. He had his I, weapons. Yeah, not a one. And I, the fa- I find it really hard to believe that an old man, old man Whistler could knock Ron Perlman, pure blood vampire out cold yeah. yeah you know no. one shot no he hits him with his metal leg first yeah he hits him with the metal the leg, leg. <laughs> and hit him with the bad leg <laughs> yeah that's right i always thought it was a punch did he kick him in the head no he ki- he kicks him in the stomach or something first and yeah. then pu- then punches him oh, he must have kicked him in the dick that's probably what it was <laughs> A swift dick kick it'll take down a pure blood for especially sure. yeah especially like it's like true. metal iron man leg yeah, yeah. But anyways back the other thing i wanted to mention in terms of just sheer stupidity because here's another one demoskinos knows that jared nomak is not good with uv lights wouldn't you think he'd arm his soldiers with that this is why i think that he doesn't know like he didn't know that i thought he this was all in the scene before no, 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 yeah. no, no. He didn't. He didn't know. Oh, sorry, he didn't know that the Reapers were like uh, that. The Reapers that was their weakness. That's why I'm I'm saying that because his entire facility is completely uh, open to attack with no UV protection. Also, UV is harmful to vampires. So that's, that's you're just playing. Too, so you're just playing with fire. Have it around. Yeah, that's just playing with fire. Can you imagine setting up booby traps in your own house that could kill you? That could kill you. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, fair, enough. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I feel like you'd make an exception with this one. Be like, this guy, he doesn't like me. Yeah. And we only have one way to stop him. So 
get some of those UV light filters that we have on every single gun that we've been using this whole film and just give like, give Carl, Todd, <laughs> give Carl and Frank one. And that's it. <laughs> Dude, these like how you give the them. lawyer one. Give the lawyer one. <laughs> the He'll lawyer can have one because sure. he's pretty yeah. fucking capable. But man, yeah. these guards are just these guys are like the 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 stormtroopers that couldn't make it. You know, like yeah. these guys are just yeah. the worst. <laughs> Imagine arming all of them with UV lights. That is a scary thought. Everybody for dead. any vampire. Everybody's That's true. Dead. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> those guys were not good. They were in a full circle, firing into the circle at Nomak. Like they're they're shooting the guy on the other side too. <laughs> it's just it's bananas. It's yeah. bananas. Yeah. Oh, and this lawyer, he gets it big, like RoboCop style. Like he, yeah. like when he gets it. Oh my god, he gets the whistler shoots him like fucking in the taint. Yeah. <laughs> and and the way that he falls in the last one, it lets you know that he got it in the taint. Because <laughs> he jumps a little and then his knees buckle and go in and then he falls. And <laughs> you know, Whistler is shooting from the floor because the next shot is Whistler opening a vent. So I'm 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 questioning how he shot him through the floor. But yes, he definitely had the angle to shoot him yeah. right in the right in the gooch. Yeah. yeah. I'd also love to know who designed that that <laughs> stronghold because there's a lot of floor space to crawl around under there. Yep. They're not yep. even vents, they're just and like spaces in the floor. <laughs> yeah. How is how is everything on a raised floor? Yeah, everything so everything's raised. on a raised floor. How is everything on a raised floor? Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, you had yeah. so much room to move around under there too. Like it was a big crawl space. Yeah, it's a, a yeah. crawl space. And, and Whistler's intricate knowledge of 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 the underground to get to Blade's yeah. cell. Like yeah, yeah. The, the the longer cut of the movie is is Whistler getting lost for three hours in the fence. <laughs> Um, oh, so, so coming back quickly to, to Nomac, uh, attack, I love these scenes of Nomac just dummying these guards. Yeah. It really shows how powerful he really is and culminating in this shot, which I absolutely love from this movie, which is the pile of bodies. The shot goes up and he's yeah. like drinking the last guard and he's, you know, like the maws open, the stingers out and like he's, he's, he guys got this great screen. This movie sounds great, by the way. Great yes. sound design. Yeah. This movie. Yeah. Um, another great monster movie moment. Love that. Love that. And that's, that's purely a del Toro like flourish. Love that. Oh, stuff. Yeah. Um, so then we get, uh, and then we get a uh, blade uh, being rescued and he falls into the vat of blood comes out and he has this really, sorry, go ahead. Antoine. I want to say something to this. Yeah. This yeah. Is, this is strictly for Justin. Yeah. First movie, no blood on his body or on his costume. <laughs> this movie covered in blood. Juices everywhere. Juices everywhere. Juices everywhere. And he's he is, covered in blood everywhere. He's every, super juicy. every scene he had some kind of blood on him. He walks in from a fight scene, he has a cut on his forehead. He's You're right. This whole movie, he has blood on him. That's so true. You got You're your wish. absolutely right, dude. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. Even in the last fight, he has blood in his mouth, which is yep. like really, you don't see that in the first movie at all. Exactly. I feel yeah. like yeah. he's taking damage in this film. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. Um, yeah. So he, he comes out, uh, of the, uh, of the blood and he has this crazy, awesome fight scene, which is, which is fun. And it echoes the uh, first movie's fight scene, but in the first movie's fight scene, get this, he gets his glasses first, then kicks everyone's ass in this yeah. movie. He kicks everyone's ass first. Then he gets Thank the you. glasses after nice little switch up, very inspired. Um, Another soundtrack. Uh, this this song wasn't on the soundtrack, but it was a song they used in the movie that I listened to religiously after. Uh, the Crystal Method, the name of the game. Great yeah. fucking mm -hmm. song. And um, while this action sequence doesn't have that multi, doesn't have that multi uh, attacker uh, flourish of the 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 ninja. Uh, the ninja vampire fight scene from the blade uh, portion. I do enjoy this. Just the sheer power. Like when he's when he's just dummying these guys, and for once, Blade gets to give them a taste of their own taser medicine when he gets a hold of that fucking taser. <laughs> he just fucking, and it almost looks like he's got a lightsaber for the longest yeah. time. Where he's just smashing people's sparks are going off everywhere. He's kicking people into walls. He shoves a taser into the guy's face. He does not like tasers. How do you <laughs> how do you like the them tasers, you fuckers? Yep. <laughs> And this this fight scene has 100% more 
wrestling suplexes yes! than yes. any other film I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. Dude, it's such a good suplex. Like that's as just, a huge wrestling fan, that's what I wanted that? to get into. Is like, yeah, I'm let's talk it. about that. That's let's talk about that. suplex was perfect. <laughs> perfect. The guy perfect. was straight up, and he, the way that's... he landed too. Like you see a suplex, and you wonder. Who's really getting the brunt of that? The guy that's yeah. throwing the one that's falling. This one you could tell because the whole yeah. fucking floor shatters. It's yeah. it, I've never it seen anything like so that. Good. It was so good. It was so, so good. good. Like yeah. and he, the way he held it, and he's like, <laughs> and he's staring. He's, he's staring, staring Reinhardt. Yeah, he's just like this is this is what you're gonna get. And then he gets him even better. That is my favorite fight scene this entire movie. Yeah, that, that whole fight scene is my favorite one. Like yeah, my one before the suplex where he puts the taser in the guy's forehead. Yeah. yeah. Like through the helmet, I was like, "Oh, yeah, yeah." I like that moment too, and I like when he's crushing helmets. You see, it, they're bloody. Yeah, like yeah. he is breaking skulls. Like when yeah. he's when he's beating these guys down. Um, yeah, the suplex was such a fucking. Well, when I first saw that in the theater, I'm like, "Are you joking? It's a fucking suplex!" And he holds it, and he drop, and he drops him. He, <laughs> he drops him. My favorite moment though is the suplex. But the way he pops back up like a yes. cartoon character, yeah. he's just the like, music cuts. <laughs> he's just like <laughs> and, and Mario out of the tunnel. To, <laughs> to, put, to put a button on that, Reinhardt's reaction is even better. He just oh goes, yeah. Huh. <laughs> well, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. He might as well have just accept. What did he say? Well, right, the, my dad said before he killed my mom. My you mom. gotta do it. Whatever line yeah, you said, yeah. you gotta yeah, do yeah, it yeah. yourself, right? Yeah. And I'm just like. You are too cool for this right yeah. now. He just killed a thousand people. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I actually really love his reaction. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's great. Like, it's yeah. excellent. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, the, and when he does say, and when he, he the way he delivers the line is like, well, like my dad said before he killed my mom. Yeah. When you got to do something right, you got to do it yourself. I I love his delivery because like yeah. like you like you said, it's it's awful like what he's saying is so so awful but yeah. i can't help but kind of smile when he says it because his delivery is perfect it's insane <laughs> i, I yeah. can't he's so good in this movie man so then he goes to he goes to stab him and blade they have this moment where you know he catches the uh, catches a sword in his hands i like i actually quite like this because it's like yeah. um you can see blade like blade and you know P permanent himself he's not small like you see no. him he's 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 not like as uh, like a limber, I guess I'd say, as as was the sex, but he's not a small dude. So when he, he catches it and he sh shoots it up in the air, I could believe that Wesley is like exerting a ton of strength here, like holding on to this, holding on to the sword. And then he splits, he splits him down the middle. And uh, that was a that was a big moment in the theater when that shit happened, when he uh, when he splits him down the middle. That's that was fun. And then um, you get the you get the shot of Whistler throwing the glasses if you watch closely that scene is actually played backwards so if you look in the background whistler throws the glasses and then his hand goes like this and he does like weird stuff in the background because the, the shot is played backwards um uh, like a, a a weird little tidbit there um anyway so then we get to the last scene in the in the movie uh with the fight between uh nomak and and blade first nomak kills uh damaskinos i Can feel like there's for a second Sorry? Yeah, yeah. Well, absolutely. Can we talk yeah, about yeah. that for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is his blood blue? Yeah. Or green or whatever tinge of color. I mean, yeah. I'm color deficient, so I don't know what yeah. color it really is, but it's it's not red. Yeah, it's not red. Like, it's, it's not, not red, red, and it's not anything close to what I thought a vampire's blood would be, even so, for an elder. Yeah. So, so I don't understand what that is. Like, you guys are the monster fans. Yeah, so I'm yeah. Trying to figure out what, what is that? I had two theories, one yep. being the, the elderly vampire thing. I mean, his, his skin and everything you can see is kind of, I think Del Toro mentions marbleizing or yes. looking like marble. He's so old. Mm -hmm. But also the way that he kills him, he said that he, he nicked spared something. him. He spared he's, him and he's draining his life force or something like that. So it almost leads me to believe that it's something other than blood that keeps them going. So it's not actually blood, but I, oh, okay. So one or the other. So what, what I think happened Evil. was on set, there's a giant whiteboard, okay? <laughs> this whiteboard has a giant matrix. And the matrix is, what kind of vampire are you? And what, do you, what does it look like when you die, when you're killed by these things, okay? So we've got vampires, and we've got garlic, sunlight, silver. And we've got reapers, garlic, sunlight, silver. The garlic, garlic slot is empty. Okay, we didn't explore that one in this yeah, movie. Right. Yeah. Um, and then we've got 
old Nosferatu thousand year old vampires who are marbleizing. So what, so what happens to you when you get exposed to sunlight, when you're exposed to garlic and when you're, when you're just killed, <laughs> you know, uh, what color is your blood? There are lots of different blood color types in this movie. If you notice the reapers are like clear sludgy yeah, yeah, yeah. blood, you know, vampires are red and then Damaskinos is, is, is green or whatever blue. Um, I think the idea for Damaskinos is that he's so old that the blood, like, I think blood uh, when it's not, when it's not exposed to oxygen, this is like, this is the full on scientist in me talking right now. Um, I'm also probably making all of this up uh, when it's not exposed to oxygen is actually blue. Uh, it's just when it gets pumped full of oxygen, it turns yes, red. Yes, you're, you're right. Um, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So I think the idea is that he's just so old and he's been a vampire for so long. Like his blood is basically like he's, he's bathing in blood. I don't know. I feel like it's just like unoxidized. For whatever oh, reason, okay. yeah, something like that. Something that makes like more that. sense then. There you go. Yeah. See? Yeah. Thank you. See. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go with I'll that. Take that. I will Science, take that. Scientist Katru, Doctor Katru says, "Old <laughs> marbleized vampire's blood is unoxidized. That's why it's blue. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it's coming out of his body. Would it, that it, instantly uh, oxidize it? Anyways, we don't so, have to think <laughs> anyway, let's, let's talk about the there's CG no oxygen place. in that room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We'll just add another element to this whole problem. <laughs> oh, so, boy. so uh, he bites. Uh, he bites Nisa, and uh, Blade uh, attacks him from the roof. And we hit this like knockdown drag out fight, which I have similar feelings. I actually really do like this fight. I like this fight a lot because it is not the Donnie Yen. This this fight was not choreographed by Donnie Yen mm -hmm. uh, because this, you could tell this is like a this is like a brawl. Yeah, it's the like way a they, they street yeah. fight. It's a full on street fight. And uh, when he attacks him from the roof, we get the CG stunt double again. Actually, I'm actually okay with that. He stabs him through the chest to start things off. Mm -hmm. um, then they run at each other, full tilt. And in other movies, like they stop and fight or whatever, or you cut to like some other action. This movie, they run at each other and they literally just run into each other. They're so yeah. angry with each other. They literally just like, it's like a football game. Like that's yeah. what you're watching. And I loved the ferocity in that. Like this fight is vicious and it's dirty. And I would say, I'll also say this movie, you said it has a hundred percent more wrestling moves than other movies, than other, yes. than the last yeah. It has 200% more because there is a vicious elbow drop in this yes, fucking movie. <laughs> okay. So, um, so we get this like really vicious, uh, really like barroom brawl fight, which I love, but then we get the mix of some CG that doesn't look so good. I don't think the it's at the offense level of like the more PS2 Mortal Kombat Godlight no, scene. No. But yeah. it is it, it they tip they tip their hand a little too much in this scene. Yeah. Yeah. They 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 use it well in this one as opposed to aggressively in the other one. I feel like they use it kind of in the background in most cases on this. Aside from I guess I'd have to see the fight scene again, to be honest, but there's the big swing with the sword at the beginning, but then there's also like when he's climbing up the thing to do the elbow drop. Yeah. The, when he it's jumps in the background. Yeah. yeah it, it's yeah. in the background or they switch, they switch from the CG double to the actual real yes. person. Like when blade gets knocked the fuck out. Yeah. Um, they, I felt like they used it a little less, um, not aggressively, uh, maybe obnoxiously. I don't obnoxiously know. Obnoxiously, is, I think that's a good word for yeah, it. That's a good word. So, yeah, 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 they they tried they 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 integrated a little bit more naturally into this. Um, I really liked Luke Goss's little his go his parting words in this in this scene as well. Yeah, um, I, I thought he played it really well. I was oh, actually yeah. blown away. Like, yeah. He was exceptional as a villain in this, and and as just a character in general. Forget just yeah. the villain. Um, he killed it in this. I, I was really impressed with his work. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Antoine, what do you what anything anything to add on that fight scene? Anything you liked or didn't like? No, I like the fight scene. Uh, mm -hmm. I, it's still not one of my favorites, though. Um, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. It, I feel like it, it's it's a straight up two guys who hate each other are just gonna beat the shit out of each other. Yeah, that's, that's what I got out of that whole fight scene. Yeah, there was no choreographing or anything like that. Um, I don't feel like it was super choreographed at all. I feel like it was just like Wesley's like, let's just swing at each other and then yeah. we'll see where we go from here. <laughs> yeah, right. Like let's just let's just see what happens. That's why I, I do feel like that went. Like the, the elbow drop came in, and they're like, yo, let's throw an elbow drop in there. Like, <laughs> like, it's not like an actual wrestling match, because like most wrestling matches have somewhat of a script. Yeah. Yes. But For then sure. most yeah, of the moves yeah. are, most of the moves in between 
are like when they curl up together. Yeah, like infrared. They're like improvised. okay, clothesline, clothesline coming off, coming off this, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I feel like that's kind of how it went, but interesting I, yeah. I like it but I, I again like my favorite fight scene is the one before it yeah oh no that that's a legend that that yeah, fight scene's a legend I, that's I, one-on-one I, one fight scene i could have i could have done without like yeah. i could have done with an easier ending sure like, i don't think the fight scene for that one was really required because he kind of tipped his hand yeah. whistler already done told him all the information yeah so all that information already got back to blade so why are they even fighting in the first place when the real villain was the one that no mac just killed yeah right. right so why are we why are we even beefing anymore at this point it, well yeah you know? i think it's i think it has to do with like whether the well they the reapers are going to spread and what he does to nisa yeah. uh by yeah. the way i i like um nisa as a as a character i think is kind of like a bit of a wash unfortunately in this movie because in the previous movie um and i'm probably pronouncing her name wrong but Enbushi wright played uh uh karen yeah. um the hematologist i thought she was great she's one of the yes. things i actually really remember from that movie and i remember her face i remember what she did uh she uh it's just in here nisa yes she's part of the blood pack yes she she goes in and she she fights and and all of that but she's just like she's not given a lot to do um right. and her relationship with blade is kind of like i really appreciate the fact that these movies don't have a romantic interest for blade i'm uh, that's that's my I really do like that because it it's it's it would seem forced and convoluted and they they hint at that here but it's more of like his love of humans that they're hinting at rather than uh, is like a romantic love with her but I think it's the you know he he basically just chomped down on this girl uh, who he has a relationship with and he's really pissed off and let let's let's be honest I mean he probably like dropping into that vat of blood is probably equivalent of like doing like a mountain of cocaine. So this guy is just riding <laughs> he's, high he's, he's right riding now. He is guy. looking for a fucking fight. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah, um, I agree like the, the love interests for him in both movies obviously were these two women. Um, yeah. And they don't explain what happened to her. They don't explain what happens to either of them. Like, well, yeah, what happens yeah. to Nissa? like she gets burnt up, but the other right. one we don't know what happened to her. No, like, he just no. takes off and comes to Prague. And yeah her back in new york <laughs> yeah it's a, it's unfortunate because i think i thought she was i thought she had a lot of promise and i really did like her in the last movie but yeah. nisa here not not so much contract right? problem yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was a contract problem yeah a contract. Yeah, too no much doubt. money for blade too so he's like all right <laughs> bitch you ain't cutting into my money i don't even, <laughs> I don't even the fbi my money or the irs my money i ain't gonna yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could do a whole podcast on yeah. that <laughs> Tax evasion. Tax <laughs> evasion. Yeah. Oh, shit. Shit, I need um, y'all no money. I'm going to jail. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, one moment I do want to call out from this, other than the elbow drop, is when he breaks his arm. It disgustingly, like the compound oh, yeah, fracture he gets. Yeah. yeah. And he brings his arm back and he uses it to punch him in the face. That's like <laughs> I'm like this. Uh, some of that. Some of that stuff is cool. But I think you're. I think you're right. Coming off of like such a huge action sequence. With the you know with the fucking tasers and the suplexes, yeah. I mean like it's hard to it's hard to live up to that in a one on one fight. After yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you get the final moments of the movie where uh, Blade takes uh, Nisa out to watch the sunset. She burns up because she's been infected with the Reaper virus and she is going to turn. Mm -hmm. um, and then the very end of the movie, uh, because these movies need to end with with Blade attacking a vampire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, we get this weird scene where the where the guy goes to the like I guess a nudie show, uh, and can you imagine how, how scared would you be? I'm expecting to see naked girls, and when Blade shows up instead, this big it's black shocking. man with a long sword. <laughs> you know, yeah. you don't shocking. you really don't know whether he's there to kill you or even yeah. worse potentially is he's there to give you a show, yeah. which starts... I don't think. I don't think Blade's show would be good. He's just very rigid. He's very rigid. And, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, just, I, I would kill like to see the alternate. In. He has no flex in the hips. No, no flex in the <laughs> hips. I feel like it just wouldn't be the kind of show that, uh, that, that, that vampire was after. I mean, he brought razor blades. He was ready to go. <laughs> he was, yeah, he was. He was ready to have a good time. That guy was ready. I'd love to see the alternate cut where they have an outtake where he just starts dancing instead. Of it would be so great. Uh, oh my god! You know that yeah. somewhere. You know that somewhere. Oh, for sure. They sure, yeah. clown. You know they have that somewhere. They like, clown. The lights come on. He's like doing a. a, like a he's taking his coat off. You know, like yeah. he's doing a little dance, doing a little shimmy or something. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh man, that's that's fucking fun. They clowned on that set for sure. Um, yeah. 
yeah so that brings us to the end of blade 2 any final any final thoughts on this on this movie you guys want to close out with still I'm, I'm i'm still of the nature where i still love this movie oh, i me like too. a lot of, i like a lot of bad movies i've been told that i enjoy bad movies i i've and been I'm, told something similar and i'm Antoine. okay with that oh, me yeah. too, you know man. what when i go to a movie experience yeah my mind is usually turned off and i enjoy the experience that i'm having yeah and then after the fact i'll be like you know what that movie was probably shit <laughs> like wonder woman i went in there with my mind turned off and then i finished yeah. the movie and i was like that movie was a waste of my two hours of my life yeah and the same thing with uh harley quinn <laughs> harley yeah. uh birds of birds of prey birds of prey yeah yeah. yeah 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 that was another movie where i sat there for two hours and i was like wow like i'm talking about I, wonder woman 84 or wonder woman 84. original 84 yeah yeah, yeah. 84 yeah. 84 yeah. and and harley quinn I, and i hate the sh- shit on those movies because two fantastic lead women like, yeah but they were just poorly poorly done yeah. but you yeah. know I, i'm not saying that i'm just saying that because like i usually go into a movie theater with no preconceived notions i go in there with my mind empty sure, ready to yeah. enjoy some ready to enjoy two hours of of someone's hard work yeah a lot of so, people's hard work yeah yeah, yeah. and i and i'm always down for a bad movie oh yeah but he's like in some way this is a bad movie blade was a this blade 2 was a bad movie but i will watch it over and over and over again yeah because it has moments where you're like man, like the fight scenes yeah like, oh man there's, there's so a good. fight scene almost every 20 minutes in this movie <laughs> yeah you're right there's a lot of <laughs> there are a lot of action sequences in yeah. this movie yeah like almost every 20 minutes there's some kind of action or fight scene yeah yeah it, it, it this movie is there's plot holes aplenty there's oh, yes. there's yeah. a lot of silliness to it um but overall you can tell i think the important thing about this is that it feels like it was made with love like yes. you can tell from mm-hmm. all of the actors to the writers and the dialogue that they put together to the direction to everybody it 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 just seems though there are obviously plot holes it seems cohesive in the effort of this movie and you get a, a a very consistent vision of what what the movie starts off off as and what it ends off as, and everything in between just seems so well put together that I mean those types of things kind of almost go unnoticed. They did go unnoticed from me specifically for a very long time because there was just so much to enjoy in the film. It's it's when you're doing an exercise, like obviously we're doing a podcast talking about it and dissecting it. And I'm obviously ramping up my some of my feelings on some things more for the comedy of it all than anything. But at the same time, like it, it's, it's we're spending the amount of time, like we've done like an hour and a half on this. We're, we're doing that because we like this film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and we're doing it in a way that it's a retrospective. So there's, we're revisiting something we certainly didn't have to do. So it's a, it's a, it's a compliment to the film. Yeah. That being said, we're also going to do the same thing with Blade Trilogies or Blade oh, Trilogy. God. So <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, that's a I'm bit kind different. of excited. That's going to that be, that was going to, I have a lot of shit to talk about. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have yeah. a lot of shit. Man, and Antoine, for the next one, we should get you to do the, the plots and we should get you to lead the plot synopsis on that one. All right, I'll make some yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not going to be good at that because I'm just going to shut everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you might need to make your own notes just in case I start going down the rabbit hole. And just fucking shit up. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, no, I I agree with both you guys. Like this movie, uh, this movie is made with made with love. It's entertaining. You can drive trucks through these plot holes. It introduces ideas that sometimes just don't pay off. Some stuff doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But man, it's just like unique, a unique vision. It's totally different than the first movie. I think as a double feature, Blade and Blade 2 are excellent. They complement yes. each other so, yeah. so well because they are so wildly different from each other. Uh, but the common piece yeah. is Blade because Wesley Snipes is fucking Blade. He yeah. is Blade. There's no question. And his character, his, his character idiosyncrasies are carried through both movies and it keeps you kind of cohesive right yeah. you know the first one being that kind of gritty urban cold clinical you know action film hong kong style action film and then the second one being full on monster juices everywhere kind of movie right like that's you said juices it the best everywhere. that's how i'm going to describe <laughs> that's how i'm going to describe this movie from now on that's like blade 2 colon juices everywhere that's the that's the new name for this fucking movie um but uh, but yeah, and of course, like Guillermo del Toro, a visionary director, 
who went on to do like a ton of excellent, you know, excellent movies, splitting blockbusters like, you know, P- Pacific Rim, you know, uh, Crimson Peak to like Pan's Labyrinth and The Devil's Backbone. And uh, of course, like Shape of Water, which won, you know, won, won the Oscar. So this guy is nothing to slouch at. And you can see the prototyping of all yeah. of that stuff in here. It's all yeah. in here. Um, one thing, sorry, one thing quick I want to mention before we sign off is that the Reapers in this movie are basically an idea that Guillermo del Toro had of uh, of uh, basically vampire, like supercharged vampires, that he had the idea already for The Strain. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that show yes. or a set of Ooh. series of books, yeah. but that was a t- that became a TV show after the books came out, and the vampires in The Strain look a lot like the Reapers. But of course, del Toro used he used Blade Two as like. Like, hey, let me like prototype this and see like how how far can we take it in Blade? And then for the strain, he basically perfected it. And he said like, this is what they're going to look like. So an interesting little tidbit there. If you guys haven't haven't checked out the strain, you can, or if you at least check out like the vampire stuff from the strain, you'll notice a lot of commonalities between Blade 2 and, and, and the strain. Um, yeah, cool, man. Like, I love the movie. It's aged a little less gracefully than Blade, but man, it's still entertaining. Still oh, a yeah. hoot. It's still two hours of great entertainment. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Till next time when we're going to talk about uh, the, the the crowning jewel <laughs> of of the, the Blade franchise, Blade Trinity. Until then. The jewel. Yeah. <laughs> this has been Uttal. This has been Justin. And Antoine. And thank you all for listening or watching if you're checking us out on YouTube. And we'll see you next time. See you guys. Peace. All right. Peace. Peace. Drums.